Timmon, and thank you all for being here. Thank you for the job you are doing. In many ways, it is a very thankless job, but obviously a very important one, and we appreciate it, even though we may have some policy differences from time to time. Um, uh, Chairman McFarlane, um, we have discussed Indian Point in New York in the past, um, and I want to revisit uh, again, it again. It is one of the most safety serious issues facing the New York metropolitan region, and I want to urge continued uh, vigilance from the NRC. Um, Indian Point has an operational history that has been plagued by serious questions, unplanned shutdowns, leaking fuel pools, and inadequate emergency notification and response systems. Um, all members of Congress, and I am one, uh, representing the county in which Indian Point is cited, uh, has, have called for its closure as well as our governor as well. So it is not uh, something, obviously, that we take uh, lightly. Um, particularly concerning are the changes that H.R. 3132 um, would make to the NRC's emergency authorities and response structure. Um, I know others on this committee share my concerns of some of the inadequacies of the response structure uh, brought forth in this legislation. You have heard it. Um, but I would like it if you could address uh, some of those concerns. Und under current law, uh, the chairman of the NRC holds the authorities necessary uh, to save lives and manage disaster. Uh, the changes in H.R. 3132, in, in my opinion, would have the NRC governing crisis by committee, um, and we all saw how poorly that worked at Fukushima. Um, so uh, I am told, and correct me if I am wrong, uh, before the chairman could declare an emergency, um, you would have to notify the fellow commissioners, the relevant congressional committees, and the general public, the facility. Uh, could well be uh, on its way to a mel meltdown. So I would like to hear from you um, how you foresee this legislation impacting your ability to manage a potential crisis, specifically in a major metropolitan area like New York. Um, <clears throat> I, I think that uh, the Commission procedures are adequate at the uh, agency. I think the uh, Commission is operating well, operating collegially, and I don't see any need to alter or change the existing procedures, especially with regard to emergency powers. Thank you. Would anyone else care to comment? If not, I will I'll, I'll move on. Um, Chairman McFarland, I would like to also ask you, um, in your testimony, um, you mentioned the efforts the NRC has been undergoing to determine what regulatory action is required to the expedited transfer of spent fuel to dry cask storage. Um, I have been particularly uh, interested in that for years, have a bill that does it. And I understand the Commission is evaluating uh, staff assessments and expects a proposal by early 2014. Um, we are all aware of the risks from spent fuel and storage pools that can and, and that it can be reduced by moving some of it to dry cask. So can you elaborate on how the NRC is prioritizing the dry cask storage of spent fuel rods as well as any hurdles that might remain for the implementation of this safe, safer storage system? We are now in the process of considering whether to require expedited transfer of spent nuclear fuel from the pools at reactors to dry cast storage. And the Commission will be having a Commission meeting on this uh, in early January. We have a few papers from the staff that address this issue, and so it is an area of active consideration. Well, I thank you for that. Um, and, um, I, you know, as I mentioned, I have been concerned about it for a while, and I am very happy that you are moving forward on it. Um, let me uh, ask you my last question. Uh, Mr. Terry's bill um, chips away at the authority of the NRC chairman in a nuclear emergency, as we mentioned. Bill says the chairman, again, can declare an emergency only in response to an imminent safety or security threat at a facility in the U.S. or involving nuclear materials directly related by the Commission. Um, chairman, uh, do you think it makes sense to limit your emergency authority to events involving U.S.-based facilities and materials? And are there scenarios in which events in other countries could trigger an emergency in the United States or threaten U.S. citizens. I am told that uh, most of uh, Canada's nuclear power plants are in Ontario, near the U.S. border, near my state, home state of New York. And I am also told that last week thieves stole a shipment of radioactive cobalt-60 in Mexico, which is an incident that 
could have had implications for the United States? <clears throat> I think uh, the Chair needs flexibility to respond to an emergency wherever it is. Uh, in particular, in terms of foreign countries, as you point out, Canada has nuclear power plants that are relatively near our border uh, that may pose an emergency for the U.S. I would also like to point out that we, the United States, has military uh, personnel in a number of countries that may be near nuclear uh, facilities. If there is an emergency with one of those nuclear facilities, I think the U.S. Government would probably want the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to have a full understanding of the emergency occurring. And so I think we, we have to make sure we have flexibility to respond to s situations in which U.S. Uh, citizens are may be at risk. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gentlemen, this time has expired. Now to show that we have uh, multiple branches of the service, I turn to Colonel Johnson uh, from the great state of Ohio. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And it was only the Air Force.